There can't be many of us that haven't played a platform style game, but have you ever wanted to build one? Well, with the XNA Game Studio, building one's now quite straightforward. You can select the platform starter kit directly from within XNA Game Studio and it'll build for you the basic game you just saw running. That includes some sophisticated features like animated characters and monsters and multiple levels that are easily able, you're easily able to edit. Let's have a look at the created project. So this is quite literally just creating the project. And what we have, in fact, are a number of uh, nicely built classes for us that define the actual gameplay, um, the levels, um, the player, character, the enemies, um, as well as the gems, which are the default pickup items in this particular game. There are actually three projects built in this solution. One is for Windows, one is for the Xbox 360, and one is for the Zune. So you can actually compile up your version of this game and run it across any of those three platforms. Windows and the Xbox project are able to share the same high resolution graphics, so you only have to build your graphical assets once. Likewise, you only have to define your levels once, and in this starter kit, the levels are defined using text files of symbols and letters and numbers um, that identify different types of tiles that are actually in use in the game. Now, some of those tiles are actually monsters or players and are actually represented by real animation uh, running in the game. So you have a whole series of graphical assets there that you can use as your own animated characters or in fact you can enhance them again just by loading those graphics into a graphical editor. When you come to the Zune, all the code's pretty much the same, um, but there is a low resolution content folder for those graphical items to be to meet the Zune's low resolution. All three projects though do share the same sound content. Okay, well let's step into the basic platform builder as produced by just a starter kit. I'm going to look at the load next level method in the platformer game class um, because this is where the gameplay is really defined. What you what you find here is that we're actually looking into um, the storage container for the game, the location of the game on a storage container, and we're going to actually cycle through every one of those level definition files, those text files that define each level. And as you finish a level, it'll look for the next one. And when it finds no more levels, it'll then actually revert back to the first level. So the gameplay at the moment is an endless loop of your levels with no defined end. And the scores aren't actually carried across levels at this point in time either. So there's a couple of things there that we'll want to work on to make this more of a real game, if you like. Now if we work down, you can actually see once we've determined the level that we're going to run, we then create that new level. Um, so let's have a look at how that level is built. So switching to the level class, there are a number of elements there that are quite interesting. We've got an array of tiles, which, are all, which is the converted um, structure um, of the text file, if you like, for the level. And we have different background layers that are defined as texture 2D elements. Our player um, uh, state is held at, le at the level, level, if you see what I mean. And the level also includes um, two generic lists, one for all the gems in the level and one for all the enemy. And that enables us to determine whether they're alive or dead and keep track of them. Okay, let's look into loading up this level because this is where that text file is um, translated into the graphical level, if you like. And that's done using the load tiles method, taking the path that's been provided to the level constructor to point to that text file that we want. And what's also interesting is that we use the same three graphical background elements for every level. So the backgrounds are divided into three layers already, background, midground, and foreground. Um, and one of the enhancements we'll be doing is providing horizontal and vertical scrolling that gives us a parallax scrolling of those background elements. Let's look at load tiles in a little bit more detail. Load tiles basically runs through that text file 
and it uses you know a rather large switch statement to basically determine um, what the character actually implements and that's determined in the load tile method here which result of is loaded into our tiles multi-dimensional array so let's go down and look at load tiles so this is where you can easily add more features to your game you can add you know power-ups poisons more monsters uh, other graphical elements different styles of platform tiles such as traps for example there's already several defined for passable or non-passable blocks for example or platforms um, that just present graphics on the level as you move through um, but this is where you can actually go forward and define lots of elements um, to be created we then have different methods for the different types of tile that basically set up um, the state for those different types of tile um, including graphics so you can see also that we, we add to the gems collection here when we load a gem tile okay now I've switched to my enhanced platformer code just so you can see what I've changed first off I want to be able to reward the player when they reach certain scores and give them more lives so I've set up a simple increment um, which is every 2000 points you get another life um, and the player actually has um, the current score and its current lives state passed across levels and at the moment I'm doing that just via parameters on this method call but really that's going to have to become a more serious game state structure um, as my game gets more sophisticated you can see I've got a big switch statement here which is basically giving me the opportunity to load different background graphics um, for each of the defined um, levels in my game at the moment they're all set to the same because graphics is the biggest challenge here not coding so we step through down to um, the load tile switch statement again you can see I've made some additions I've got a power-up gem represented by the letter P and I've got a poison gem represented by the uh, letter Q for queer um, it makes you feel queer as the player and you lose speed uh, in this particular instance and I've set up a couple of additional flags on the load gem method to indicate whether this is a power up or a poison again that's gonna have to become a more sophisticated structure as I add more features to um, to this game in terms of pickups power-ups and other collectible items um, but basically now having extended the gem structure with those power-up states or poison states um, the new gem is added through uh, to us so I'm running out of time for this short video so let's just show you where we get to um, this um, is where the game is currently the graphics aren't complete but we have scrolling uh, we have high scores, we have lives, um, and a custom level that runs on and on and on. And you'll be able to see in just a moment uh, one of my pickups working. So the red gem is a power up, and now I've got a power up. I can actually kill the baddie monsters, um, and then I can move through and keep on playing. So if you want to see more, um, I've got another podcast or screencast coming up. So uh, do watch that or go and look at my blog at whatyoudo.net.